Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about second messengers, especially cyclic AMP. So this has been asked previously in many university questions as a short note. So we'll see more about it. So as I always say, we can start the answer by writing an introduction which should include the definition of second messengers. See, we know that second messengers are they are intracellular signal molecules that are formed by a series of enzymatic reactions subsequent to the formation of a hormone receptor complex. They are designated as second messengers. So see, suppose if this is a cell and suppose we've got a receptor here. When a hormone binds on to, the, to this receptor, what happens? There will be a series of enzymatic reactions that take place. And that is brought about by mediators that are, called, that are known as second messengers. So that is the definition of second messengers. And then you can write examples of the various second messenger systems that are known. First, first of all, we have cyclic AMP and then we have got calcium as a second messenger, cyclic GMP and also IP3 that is inositol triphosphate and diacyl glycerol. So these are the various second messenger systems that we have. So now we will move on to the topic proper which is cyclic AMP. So cyclic AMP, the full form of cyclic AMP is cyclic adenosine monophosphate and is an important second messenger for many peptide and amine hormones. So why are we uh, highlighting that it is for peptide and amine hormones? See we know that it, it is a peptide hormones that cannot cross the cell membrane, right? The peptide hormones cannot cross the cell membrane. Thus, they will act on the receptors that are present on the cell membrane, right? So when the hormone binds on to the receptor, they form the hormone receptor complex. This in turn will activate. So suppose this is the G protein couple receptor. This will activate the G proteins which in turn will activate the second messenger system. So that is why we are mentioning that it is the these uh, second messenger systems are for peptide and amine hormones because they cannot cross the cell membrane. Okay. And another important point about cyclic AMP is that it is the first second messenger to be discovered. So now we can uh, write about the or draw a diagram for the mechanism of signal transduction. So as I said before, suppose this is a cell membrane. Here you can see that this is a receptor which is present and this is the G protein coupled receptor. Why do we say so? Because here you can see that, that this is a 7 pass. There are 7 uh, times these receptor passes through the cell membrane, right? So G protein coupled receptor because it's a 7 pass mem uh, receptor system and it is coupled to G proteins, okay? So when a hormone binds on to this G protein coupled receptors, what happens? See, we know we've got different G proteins that are coupled to this receptor. Of this, this alpha subunit will go and bind to another enzyme which is called the adenyl cyclase. Okay. When the G protein binds on to adenyl cyclase, what happens is the adenyl cyclase will convert the ATP to form cyclic AMP. So that is how cyclic AMP is formed. And what does the cyclic AMP do? The cyclic AMP will then cause phosphorylation of a different phosphorylation by activating protein kinase A. So cyclic AMP will activate protein kinase A and this in turn will cause phosphorylation of the various proteins present in the cell and thus it will produce the cellular response. Okay. So this is how cyclic AMP will act as a messenger. So see this was a hormone here, right? It, it, it uh, got bound onto the receptor forming the hormone receptor complex. So here it is bind onto a uh, GPCR that is G protein coupled receptor and thus causing changes for the G proteins. So these are the G proteins. And so what happened? It, got, it activated the adenyl cyclase enzyme which in turn converted ATP to CAMP which in turn activated protein kinase A which caused phosphorylation of proteins and then caused a cellular response. So indirectly this hormone was able to produce a cellular response. Okay. So the same thing we can write in a form of a flow chart. So when the hormone binds to the receptor present on the cell membrane, the hormone receptor complex is formed that results in activation of G proteins. This in turn will cause activation of the membrane enzyme adenyl cyclase and this causes cat this catalyzes the conversion of ATP to cyclic AMP. This in turn causes activation of protein kinase A 
and thus causes formation of various phosphoproteins okay so this is the mechanism of signal transduction and then you can mention that various hormones that can act via CAMP these are antidiuretic hormone corticotropin releasing hormone growth hormone releasing hormone gonadotropin releasing hormone follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone see you can remember it as see there are many mainly there are three releasing hormones corticotropin releasing hormone growth hormone releasing hormone and gonadotropin releasing hormone and then we've got the two reproductive hormones that are FSH and LH and antidiuretic hormone. We will learn more about the mechanism of each in the respective systems. Okay. So now you can finish your answer by writing some clinical aspects. So an important clinical aspect and also a physiological basis question is the role of cholera toxin. See we know that cholera causes diarrhea but how does it cause diarrhea? That is because it can cause prolonged stimulation of the adrenal cyclase system. So what happens? It will cause an increase in the chloride excretion. See the channels for chloride excretion, the so chloride secretion will increase. So there will be increased chloride secretion. Thus there will be an increased sodium chloride content in the intestinal lumen, which in turn will increase the osmolarity of the contents. And thus it will retain water. So water will not be reabsorbed properly and it will cause watery diarrhea and severe dehydration. So cholera toxin acts by stimulation of this adrenal cyclase system which in turn cause increase in CAMP, right? Another applied aspect is the mechanism action of pertussis toxin. So here what happens, we know that pertussis toxin is produced in whooping cough and during this time what happens is there is a decrease in the adrenal cyclase activity because this, uh, this is activating the inhibitory G proteins. So what happens, there will be a decrease in CAMP and this in turn can impair the defense mechanism of the patient. So that is how pertussis toxin will act. For some additional scoring points you can also maybe mention about the termination of CAMP activity. So see we know that uh, the CAMP has to terminate at one point right. So this is brought about by another enzyme which is called phosphodiesterase. So see if this is a CAMP here this in presence of the enzyme phosphodiesterase will be converted to 5-AMP okay and thus its actions will stop right and what about the other proteins that were phosphorylated this enzyme that is phosphoprotein phosphatase can dephosphorylate the enzymes that have been previously phosphorylated so this is an additional scoring point that you can write regarding the termination of CAMP activity thus to conclude uh, when you get a short note like uh, CAMP a second messenger you can of course start with the definition of second messengers write the different classes of second messengers and then write about CAMP write the mechanism of signal transduction and draw the diagram and then you can uh, write about the hormones that act via CAMP and some clinical aspects so I hope this concept is clear thank you and all the best